Good afternoon. Mark Suttoth, HurricaneTrack.com, here with your hurricane outlook and discussion focusing on Hurricane Maria. The 5 o'clock advisory package has just come out. We're going to read that in just a moment. First, let's begin with a satellite uh, inspection. This shows Maria over the southwest portion of the North Atlantic Ocean, and you can see very well-established outflow, uh, very, very impressive, deep convection over here on the southwest side, the eye in and out, but overall, a fairly round appearance to it. If you look at it on the visible and zoom in just a little bit, even more impressive here. Now, certainly, nothing, just a complete shadow of its former self when it passed over Puerto Rico, thank goodness, and certainly nothing like it was over Dominica and approaching the Puerto Rico and St. Croix areas in recent days. However, still a major hurricane, a Category 3, with a very, very large wind field. We're going to go over that in just a moment. And you can see the very uh, pronounced spiraling motion. And you can even tell, look at the way the clouds are thrown out right there. You can see that right there. Still decent upper-level outflow. We're not seeing evidence of strong upper-level winds cutting across this way, blowing all the clouds off in, in one singular direction. Instead, right there, you can see that convection firing, and then the cirrus clouds fan out in that clockwise fashion, which tells me that the upper-level winds are not too inhibitive for this to develop even further, and the pressure is actually down to 950 millibars. So let's take a look at the forecast, uh, the latest advisory. This is the public advisory, and uh, a couple of things that they mention. You know, first of all, it's moving north-northwestward, and then we see the headline here, interests along the Carolina and mid-Atlantic coast should monitor the progress of Maria. Uh, here are your stats. Again, 950 on the pressure, so it's dropped a little bit, and uh, the winds are still 115 miles per hour. And the bearing on this is moving 345 degrees or north-northwest at 9. No watches and warnings right now, but they mention right here that tropical storm or hurricane watches may be needed for a portion of the coast on Sunday. So there you go. Um, we talked about the fact that it wasn't 100% that this would turn out to see, and before I get into all of that, you know, we're going to look at that and what that means so people understand this does not have to make landfall for it to be a direct major impact. And so I want to preface that, put that out there right now. We're going to look at that closer in a moment. Uh, as I said, the winds are 115 miles per hour, and the hurricane force winds extend outward uh, up to 60 miles from the center. But then look at this. Tropical storm force winds 240 miles from the center. So if this even gets to within 60 miles of the coast of North Carolina, you could easily see hurricane force winds. And that's assuming that this does not expand further. I want to change this to blue. Uh, and then, like I said, the minimum pressure, as noted from the recon plane, 950 millibars. Right now, the only hazard affecting land will be the surf, and that'll be kicking up once again for a good deal of the East Coast, uh, including still even the Bahamas, yes, Puerto Rico, the Virgin Islands, and even the north coast of Hispaniola. Large hurricane out there generating these giant ripples, if you will, in the water, and that will continue to radiate out and cause a lot of problems. So let's see if they have updated the map. This was the 11 o'clock. And not yet. Oh, <laughs> well, it's not quite 5 o'clock p.m., so I guess I can give them just a little uh, slack here that 5 p.m. is when everything's supposed to come out. It's a few minutes till 5 Eastern. So let's go over some other things while we're waiting for the map to update. You do notice real quick here that even as of the 11 o'clock advisory package, um, all of extreme eastern North Carolina here in southeast Virginia and we're talking extreme southeast Virginia, was in what we call the cone of uncertainty or the error cone, and that's probably going to change a little once this updates. We'll hit the refresh button, and there it is. Be patient, and it shall be. So the cone really didn't move that much farther to the west, but the track definitely shifting a little bit more to the west over time. Um, and this is probably, we'll read the discussion in a minute, I, my guess is it's going to be even closer than this. You know, if we look at the consensus, 
And that's probably what they're going to go with. And we'll read what the forecast discussion says and get inside the, the brain, if you will, of the forecaster and just kind of figure out what they're saying. Um, but I just think it'll be a little bit more west than this, and I'll show you why. All right, so the modeling from today, this is the afternoon model suite, and some of these you know, have more weight than others. One thing I want to point out is the GFS Ensemble mean, which is right there. And what does that mean exactly? Well, first, let's zoom in on it, and I can show you real close. All right, so this blue right here that I'm going to highlight in yellow, that is the AEMI, or the uh, Ensemble Mean of the GFS. Now, the GFS Ensembles, you have 20 members, something like that, and they play what if, basically. You have your operational, and then you have, I guess it's 19 or 20, whatever it is, additional members of the ensemble package that are run with different variables that give you different outcomes. So remember what I just said about that. So the ensemble mean was that blue. This is what the ensembles look like just as a giant cluster. See, how do you make sense of that? <laughs> First of all, you know, there are quite a few of them that get it right on the coast and even a couple of members that take off west over here towards Georgetown, South Carolina. And so you have all these different plots, and you say, my goodness, it looks like confetti. Well, that's exactly right. So how do we make sense of this? Well, that's what this is for over here. The computer generates an automatic mean or average, and we'll zoom in on this again, and I'll show you. So the ensemble mean is this blue guy right here, and that comes up really, really, really close there to 75 degrees longitude. And let me zoom in even more, get rid of that little blue thing that showed up. Come on, one day I'm going to fully understand this software. There we go. I really want to zoom in tight. Ah, oh, that's perfect. Now, this is what I need you to understand. Let's assume for just a moment that the uh, ensemble mean is going to be the track that Maria takes. All right? Let's assume that that works, okay, that that's going to be what happens. I'm not saying it will be, but just for humor me for a minute. Let's just say that Maria tracks up just like this, cuts in just a little bit, and then cuts out like that by day five. Uh, this is 120 hours out. Okay, if that were to happen spot on and the eye diameter was, I don't know, 15, 20 miles across, wouldn't it be about like that roughly? the eye itself, and then what do you have on the outside of the eye? So let's turn this to red. You have your 60 miles of hurricane force winds, so probably like that roughly, I guess. I mean, maybe even more. I know a degree of latitude uh, is roughly 60 miles from one degree to the next, and so that would put hurricane force winds over the Outer Banks. And then your tropical storm force winds extend out to 240 miles, probably more to the north than anything, so those are going to be huge as well. Yeah, you see the problem here? So this does not have to come up and cross the coast for, I don't want to say for me to be right, because I was never intending to be right when I said we need to watch this, because I think it's going to be more west. Uh, my intention is not to be right. That is not a competition. It is to keep people aware that when you see a track that says out to sea and you've got a lot of different variables at play, you can't just say that's 100%. And so for me to be correct in that theory, this does not have to cross the coast. Now, some people are going to say, yes, it does, and that's fine. I'll never convince them because we're talking about impact out here. And if it was going to come up and just do this, the impact to the East Coast would be negligible. High surf, and that is bad enough, and that's all it would be. But if we bring this up 60 miles from Cape Hatteras, and hurricane force winds extend out 60 miles, that's what they are today. What are they going to be in five days? Probably bigger than that. So I don't see a Category 3 hurricane coming up here necessarily, but it could be a 2 with 100 mile per hour winds that spread out over a huge area. Do you think that's not going to cause some major problems for Ocracoke, mainland Dare and Hyde counties, Mantio, Kill Devil Hills, Rodanthe, 
down into the eastern part of Carteret County, maybe Craven County. People live out here, okay? It's going to be an impact. And that's what I was trying to get the point across, that just you know, watching it curve out to sea and all the television graphics that we've seen and the tweets that we're seeing and statements like, oh, no worries, Maria will pass well east of the United States. That is a deterministic lion in the sand that doesn't have any context. It's the same as posting a 10-day shot of a hurricane making landfall over New Orleans on the Euro or something, or the GFS, or a 10-day snow event of 40 inches in Philadelphia. No context. So people see these graphics with Maria heading out to sea, and I realize that it's the same exact graphic that's at the National Hurricane Center site when you see it looking like this, but people need to understand more to it and most people don't take the time to read the discussion and understand about one very important thing, and that is uncertainty. So before I roll things up for the day, let's read the forecast. That's the wrong one. Discussion. Uh, refresh this. Make sure that we are looking at the right time frame. And we'll go over real quick from the forecaster, and this is uh, Forecaster Berg. First paragraph will be all about the... Uh, intensity, which, you know, basically it's going to be a Category 3 for a while, could fluctuate. And um, then about the uh, the track. So this is important right here. I'll scroll down and zoom in a little bit, and we will start reading. The initial motion remains north-northwest, but Maria is expected to turn northward by this evening or overnight. While moving between a mid-level high near Bermuda and a cutoff low over the northeastern Gulf Coast. A blocking ridge, that's important, sliding eastward over the northeastern U.S. should cause Maria to slow down to a forward motion of five knots or less beginning in about 36 hours, lasting through the end of the forecast period, so it's really going to slow down. The track models appear to have stabilized for the moment, with this being the first cycle in about a day where they have not shown a significant westward shift. Therefore, the updated NHC track forecast is relatively unchanged from the previous forecast during the first three days. The day four point was shifted a little closer to the North Carolina coast to be closer to the consensus aids and the Florida State Super Ensemble. And all of the models indicate that a northeastward motion away from the coast will begin by day five. So what do we, what do we get from this? It is very important what happens within the next probably 72 hours. If we have any additional, where it says have stabilized for the moment, every half a degree of longitude west that Maria gets from this point on means that it could make landfall across North Carolina. Unfortunately, I don't know who has access to see the Florida State Super Ensemble, unfortunately, but we can keep an eye on the different consensus, etc., Basically, we definitely want to keep an eye on what the GFS shows, the UK MET model, which is fairly close to the coast as well, and of course the Euro. Now the Euro is a little bit further east today, interestingly enough, uh, but not significant. You know, it was still close enough to possibly bring hurricane force winds to the coast of North Carolina. So the bottom line, nobody's out of the woods. I started saying that a few days ago, and I was explaining my reasons why. Uh, again, not trying to be right and some genius. It's just I've done this long enough. Sometimes it's cut and dry, like when a big trough's coming and it's going to erode the ridge and just boot it out. Oh, yeah, that's a certainty. Even if it hasn't passed your latitude yet, that's a certainty. But when you have these different players like Jose, the blocking ridge, the strong western Atlantic ridge, the warm Atlantic, the upper level low sitting over the northeast gulf, etc., that's a lot to keep up with. I just thought, okay, we shall see, and here we are. So we'll see what happens. We still have several days, and we'll let it play out. All right, well, that'll be it for me for today. I might be able to do another video update tonight, but I really want to wait and see what the models show overnight. And the major ones, of course, are the 0Z and the 12Z runs, and uh, so probably it'll be best to just do something in the morning. But I will be posting on the blog, you know, a snippet here and there, and certainly uh, on Hurricane Track at, on Twitter, so you can check that as well. All right, thanks for tuning in. I do appreciate it. I am Mark Suttoth for HurricaneTrack.com. I'll have another video discussion for you tomorrow morning.